Hello, this is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. I've got my co-anchors here with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshankaya. Good that's me, guy. How are you doing? Not bad at all. Yeah. How are you? You're excited. Yeah. Why are you excited, Ife? Because um, I think it's about time we speak up against this because um, I think the awareness is the beginning of the problem. A mm -hmm. lot of people do not, are not even aware. We're not training our kids well enough for them to grow up to know the right thing to do. So I think this is a start. So it's a step in the right direction, if you ask me. From tea time, obviously, because this conversation has been had in several spaces. Even tea time have had this conversation or has had this conversation mm -hmm. subtly, I mean, mm -hmm. in different um, topics. Mm -hmm. So if someone is really called out we are breaking it down so mm. it's something we are continuing it's not like we're really I guess it's starting different because we are giving it the whole episode yeah. to really just like um break it down so yeah, yeah. agreed okay so it's been six days like they said and counting since rape has become the number one trending conversation on nigeria's social media space from people calling for justice to be served to women reliving their um, rape experiences albeit from recent or not so recent past um this conversation um have caught across different cadre and class, even our celebrities are not left out. The conversation has also trickled down to understanding consent, laws against rape in Nigeria, effect of wrong accusations on the victim and the fight against rape, how to seek help, the rape culture and publicly shaming sex offenders in a country with just two arguably non-functional sex offenders register. It's definitely going to be a robust conversation. And joining the Tea Time crew to make sense of the present madness is Mr. Shegun Awosonya, popularly known as Sega Link. He is a human rights activist who has helped free many um, from police brutality and very interested in policy reforms. Bamidele Olalekon is a legal practitioner and a digital marketer. And of course, Uche Okoli, someone who is very passionate about women and um, she's also a social commentator. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank so, you. So um, it is so massive, like I've said, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure where exactly we are supposed to start from, but let's take it from consent, because um, like if or I would always say, um, the lack of consent is the birth of the rape culture. Mm. So maybe we should start with Uche Okoli. What do you think of the whole drama going on right now regarding um, rape? Right, well, um, I think there's been, um, I think a lot of people seem to not understand that when consent isn't given, and I think in this day and age, we really have to be explicit about what consent means. And consent really has to be, you know, either the woman is saying yes, you know, and if she's not giving her consent, then she's saying no. Um, a lot of people confuse the whole thing and sort of say, oh, well, you know, she was giving signals. Why was she in that place at, the, at that time? Um, why was she dressed in a certain way? None of that is relevant. You know, it is really about the woman giving her consent. Mm. And um, if it's not given, then it is rape. It's as, sim it's as simple as that, you know. And so I'm actually quite surprised that um, there's been, you know, alternate views being raised, like different people coming up and saying silly things, like why was the, the poor girl in the church studying at that time? And, mm. you know, um, why would that kind of question arise? Mm. Um, so I think people really, I think hopefully this program today might shed some light and also help to educate those people mm. who seem to think that, you know, the woman can be blamed for, for you know, whatever has happened to her. Yeah, I, I like how you mentioned, Uche, about how you have to be extremely explicit when it comes to um, having content. Um, I, I think we are a bit behind in really teaching people the true meaning of consent and mm. I, I remember uh, an illustration that has worked for me even as a woman because sometimes you can get easily gaslighted that you don't even know if you've been raped or not because you're not really sure if you gave your consent or if you didn't give your consent so this really helped me and I wanted to share it with all the viewers and everyone as well it's mm -hmm. about the traffic light so red means what does Stop. red and then green means get ready and then what does yellow mean no so green run quickly. Means go. <laughs> so a lot of the times if you're in the traffic light when you see yellow you want to quickly rush so that it's um before it turns green or red and i think that's what a lot of men seem consent as so is the girl 
almost about to give you an, an answer, you quickly rush and you quickly like either jump put yourself, you know, jump in and, and, and things like that. If you start to see yellow as no or take or go with cautious, we, go with caution, which is actually what it means. Mm -hmm. So ask again, um, are you are sure? You sure? Or even if it's um, physically, is she smiling as much? Is she interested as much? Um, yeah, sometimes there's a lot of complications, and it's it's really it's it's really complicated because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have alcohol, you have that she's sleeping or she's um, no, under the influence. You both are under the influence, and there is a line that is as blur. But I think everyone should have that imp that intention in mind to stay far mm -hmm. away from that line as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But so can if you I don't have that green light? Then maybe you not. You said something, and I want to actually pick on that. Where you said even as a woman, you don't, or you're not sure if your consent mm. was really yes or no. So um, I, I, I want someone like um, um, Mr. Abosanya to jump in here, uh, maybe not speaking from a lawyer's perspective or a human rights perspective, but from a personal experience. So um, the lady is not sure of her consent. And this is a conversation I've seen some guys actually raise on the TL to say, so how do we even know when you are giving a yes, since you've said yes and you're saying you are not sure of your yes or you're not comfortable, how would you advise men generally to tre um, tread this path carefully? Tiger Link. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes, I can. Yeah, I said thank you very much for having me on your program again. I just want to say that consent you know, is mostly misconstrued, even from the person who is giving or, or, you know, sometimes, especially when it comes to a man to woman relationship, um, permission for something to happen or an agreement to do something. That's basically what consent, consent, uh, consent is. But most of the time, these lines are blurred, especially when power, privilege, position and control is abused. Mm. When you are with a boss or somebody who is your pastor, or somebody who has a little bit of leverage above you. You know, we have, in the concept of social justice, we are basing it on concept of human rights and equality, you know, a way in which human rights are manifested in an everyday life, you know, people at every, at every level of society. But sometimes a woman feel compelled, you know, to be nice. Mm. You don't want to shut somebody down because of emotional intelligence teaching as well. You don't want to hurt another person. But you are trying to say, this is not right. They're trying to say, no, I don't want it. Or you're trying to say, I probably must have been interested before, but I don't think this is right. So men must watch out for all the signals. No actually means no. It doesn't mean convince me. Now, those who have been raised with the culture of when she says no, she's, she actually means yes. You're actually being raised you know, to believe in the constant sexual abuse and assault trail. Mm. Because these things, apart from violent and explicit, explicit violence, rape, incest, battery, and murder, and the rest, there's something also within that, that trail that is called removal of autonomy. There's a way in which you can make a woman feel she doesn't even have her own right to say yes or no to mm. certain things. So you're actually forcing that person by intimidating them. Some people even dope people. They drug you so that they say, after all, you slept on my bed. I've been reading a lot of funny things out there, which mm. shows that we have a lot of work to do. Mm. Somebody says any woman who sleeps on his bed is already consenting to sleeping with him, mm. which is not right. Mm. You know, and somebody says, eh, she fell in love with me, you know, and she's not even 18 yet. That is statutory rape. Yeah. So um, we need to continue, continuously, you know, um, educate people on what is mm. going on because we are dealing with, a, uh, uh, a a system a continue a continuing injustice and uh, in inequalities that has been running for a decade as a culture and to in engage a culture you must actually understand what lies beneath you must actually understand what has been taught before you must actually understand how to end it's not there's no switch they are not going to switch overnight and have everybody behave well but you have to continue to gradually explain these things All to right. people let Thank them you understand so much, what child Saga. right is. Let them understand what consent is, as you have just said, said mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. All right. Thank um, you. I just, go I on. just wanted to, you know, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. I wanted to raise a point because um, you, um, Sega just finished uh, mentioning how, you know, yes, the lines can get blurred. And one area where the line can really get blurred, you know, is in marriage. Now, you know, I've, I've I'm quite interested to see or to hear what the rest of you think about rape in marriage, whether it exists, 
you know, uh, yes, whether you can was, even actually say that there's I was going to marriage, touch on that so. because um, Section 357 and 358 of the Criminal Code is um, defined as unlawful canon knowledge of a woman or girl, underline the woman or girl, without a consent, mm -hmm. or, with cons or with consent is obtained by force, or by means of threats, or intimidation of any kind. And it goes on, or be personating a husband. That is, it's, that is, there's no legal provision for a husband to rape a woman, uh, his wife in Nigeria. That's what it means, because if you're saying that right. personating a husband, then it gives him the legal right to have carnal knowledge of her all the time. And it shouldn't be so, because I believe that um, it should be a case where even a wife, when she says no, mm. it says no. And there's a sense of entitlement that, that husbands have, like, I paid your bride's price, so mm. why can't I have knowledge of you? So I think that should also be addressed in marriages, if you ask me. Yeah, and maybe Lekho should jump in here. Um, what, what is happening in in the space regarding law and rape right now? Um, okay, so very first thing I would say is um, thank you for having me on this show. And um, it's actually very personal to me because I have sisters, you know, and I have, like, I have people that could be affected by these topics. Um, so I think the fundamental issue herein is the Nigerian law, right? From the definition um, that, you know, you gave or that, um, that the other course gave, it said, um, you know, um, having non, um, non consensual you know, sexual intercourse with a man, um, with a woman or a girl. Now, even like the entire law itself has already limited, you know, like the, the definition of rape. So Penal code out. specifically says that a man, you know, um, cannot rape his woman. Specific, explicitly, and explicitly says that you can't rape your wife. You know, so that simply means um, if, if myself and my wife, you know, are together and then she says no, because the law says you can't rape your wife, you know, automatically it's not going to, you know, amount to rape. So there's a need for like, um, like an entire overall, you know, of the criminal code, you know, the penal code, you know, all of the laws that we have to also, you know, um, um, to sort of, um, bring bring like a fresh perspective into things, you know, because when when you are in different times, your laws need to change. You know, definition of, of rape itself is so limiting that it doesn't even include men. Obviously, in Nigeria, like a man cannot be raped. And today I woke up on Twitter and obviously, you know, like a lot of men are actually being dragged, you know, saying, oh, I was raped by a man or I was raped by this and all that, you know. So, and they can't come out. Why? Because if they come out, the, the law already says that you cannot, um, you know, you cannot, uh, you cannot rape a man. So they have to just keep quiet. So obviously, only women can be raped. Hmm. The, the fundamental issue, like I said, is the laws guiding you know, all of all these things. It needs to be, you know, there needs to be a revamp. Then we cannot begin to have a proper conversation about rape, you know, because mm -hmm. if the law of Lagos itself and even the law of the North penal code says a woman, a man cannot rape his wife, you understand? Then, so what are we talking about saying, oh, that a woman can't say no? You know, I mean, like, she should be able to have, like, right to her body to say, oh, I don't feel like it today. But because the law says it otherwise, the man feels, oh, I mean, if I decide to go ahead with this, I would not be sued or I will not be held liable because the law already says that. So that's like my own um, my own standpoint. I like the right fact now. that you brought that up because even like the legal state law, the criminal code, the penal code, whatever it is, doesn't give provision for men. And I think we should focus on the male child as well because we because I had a conversation with a few people here in the office today, and I discovered that at least three men, even where I work, have been sexually abused. Mm. But they don't talk about it, or nobody raises their awareness. And the only part that that provision is given is the um, what's it called? Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And um, that I don't know if that would really suffice. So I'm asking from a legal point of view now, would that really suffice from that angle if you say the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act? And also gang rape, such as in the case of Uwa. We don't know the, um, what's it called now, the details. the details, but we don't know whether it's one person or multiple people. Definitely. Now, if it's multiple, what is the provision of the law for gang rape as well? Hmm. Okay, so um, should I should I go ahead with that or will Sega pick that up? So, let me uh, okay, let me just say something before you pick up from there. Um, okay. One thing we need to understand about laws is that they are not cast in stone. Mm. They are not mosaic tablets. Mm. So we keep saying the law is this. The law. Of course, we are, we understand the fact that our laws were badly written, you know, in such a way that it does not mirror the society in the now. Laws naturally must reflect society. That's it, because society is constantly in the move, only mm -hmm. it's, it's getting complicated by the day. And because of advocacy, that is understanding what actually, how the country works, understanding how we can create awareness and what the society is, and bringing this up in order to repeal and replace antiquated um, laws, it begins to make things work in society. We're in a civilization, and law and order is what holds us together. So it's not enough for us to say, 
the law did not provide for this. What are we doing to make sure that the law reflects society? Yeah. I think that question uh, you should uh, answer that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it, I don't think um, the, the, a lot of these questions can necessarily be, be answered, answered yeah. um, and, and that's why I, I hope we don't tend it to become an interview in sense where we're asking you for a response. But I like something that you mentioned, Pixie, um, and that you said that the fundamentals was the law. I would like to just argue a little bit into that because I think that, at least in my in my uh, personal experience, I've been surrounded by a lot of feminists. Um, in the NGO space that have tried to remake the law and change, you know, the the narrative for how we deal with um, rape because we can't obviously trust the, the law in court to do that for us. But I've, I've noticed that we've had this conversation. I mean, my parents have been having, my grandmother was a nurse and she was having this conversation with about the rape culture and the rates are still going up. They're not mm -hmm. going down. Mm -hmm. So I would like to change the narrative a little bit and start talking about the rape culture in specific. Because I think that if we demonize the law, we demonize men, um, we're not really helping the situation. What is it that is causing the rape. Like we do with everything else. If you look at a problem and it's perpetrating, we start to focus on not the symptoms, but the root cause. Um, and these are three things that I've seen on, um, in terms of like the, the pioneers before us that I've had this conversation. I want to throw it out there to everyone so that we can go from there. I also wanted to touch on um, what um, Segaling said earlier. He was talking of statutory rape. And I think that still takes us back to the law and age of consent in mm. Nigeria. So while looking at it, maybe we should look at it from that angle as well. So if um, we've been talking about the Child Marriage Act for a very long time, that a, a child that is 13 or 12 can be betrothed to somebody and the person is saying, this is my wife, I'm getting married to this child. I've had issues that have come out of that from VVF to obstetric mm -hmm. um, fistula and all that. So if... If we're going to get better and not just talk and talk, because even if we say let's not focus on the law, at the end of the day, when this case gets to the courts, the criminal um, um, lawyer would find loopholes from this law to be able but to get... But how many cases even get to the, to, to the law, to mm. be honest? I think it's... Okay, well, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, cause yeah. I, I wanted us to... This is... Rape... It can easily become a battle between genders in terms of the fact that it's male dominated and everything. So, and we have a lot of males on the conversation. There's Ife, there's Pixie, and all that. I wanted us to even dive a bit more in regards to the mentality behind that because if we don't start to unlearn certain things, so there are three things I mentioned before you cut in objectification of women, mm -hmm. so subordinating women, and the societal um, definition of masculinity. Those three things have been overall since the beginning of time that we're able to talk about rape have been an underlining thing in that. So how we define masculinity in the sense that men don't feel justified enough if they don't conquer a woman. And that's why you were saying, Saga Link, about how you've seen that in the tweets that are coming up on social media where they're saying, of course now, like, yeah, this it's is this what I'm bed. supposed to do. And then there was a research that went on globally and 86% 86% of those men felt like they did nothing wrong when yeah. they were actually like molesting and ra and harassing these women. Which so, is where we are right now because most of the stories that are coming out, the men don't even understand how it became yes. rape. So how can we start to have a conversation in regards to that? How do we start to unlearn these things? And who plays a, a part in that? Because obviously this is still a, an entertainment show. And I think entertainment is a big driving force in regards to perpetrating, um, objectifying women and also promoting toxic masculinity. If so you, if somebody's watching now, how can they if actually you ask me, help? I think the major causes or the mindset of a um, of rapist is the patriarchal system. It doesn't even help that first because it gives you that sense of entitlement. I'm the man. Mm. I am deserving. But I don't know. What, what's your take on this, Uche? Let's Let's engage with you a bit. Yeah, um, I, am I, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually believe that we need to um, look at both sides, not just the men, but also the women. Now, um, the reason I mentioned the women is because I feel that a lot of women, just I'm not sure who mentioned it, that um, we're usually a little worried about, you know, speaking up, especially if it's, somebody who's in a position of power or authority over us. Um, and also because maybe we realize that our, the process that leads to a conviction is just so horrible for the woman in Nigeria that she, and she may not even get you know, the result that she's looking for. So she's not eager to speak up or to see how she feels about this. But I would encourage women who are in this situation to definitely be very clear because, you know, we're talking about lines being blurred and 
you know, you, if you don't want to have sex or sexual relations with anybody, speak up, be bold about it, say it very clearly so that at least that side is done. Now for the men, um, it's amazing. I mean, I don't think all men um, think that it is their right to have sex with women. I've hardly come across such men, but then there are. So there must be something going on in their backgrounds. You know, maybe it's the way they've been raised. Um, maybe it's the people they hang out with. But um, I think it's programs like this, you know, this that, that will make those men who don't seem to understand that it is a crime um, to, to have sex with someone who hasn't consented. Maybe this will open their eyes. But I think the only way we can do this is to have this sort of conversation, encourage those who have been through this to go and have it reported. Um, and then also, let's see how the system, you know, uh, um, you know how the system handles this right up to the very end um you know so i really hope that these sort of programs really will be the catalyst for for enlightenment you know somebody said the only time men understand consent is when they are dealing with a gay man hmm. so <laughs> maybe i don't know who wants to jump on this sega link or lekon how can you break the idea of consent down for men? I mean, they are your gender to understand what consent is. Okay, so um, let me say this. Um, so I, I, I don't know, like I, thankfully enough, I, just like um, Uche said, I think it's based on the background, right? Because um, I have a girlfriend and I understand what cons even even if I wasn't like a learned colleague, even if I wasn't a lawyer, right? It's just common sense that if, anything less than a yes is a no right so if i'm like uh i don't think i want to you know that's a no like so it's not a thing of oh like she doesn't actually have to tell you explicitly that no i'm not interested mm. do you understand so and that's why myself and my friends were able to put out campaign saying i mean being drunk doesn't mean consent you know and it's just it's just just i think it was i'm um, sega that said it you know it's a thing of masculinity you know we need to first of all unlearn you know what we what we've typically seen you know either in movies or like the, or like society truthfully speaking right nollywood has contributed hugely into what people see to be consent mm. i saw a post about a friend of mine who is a model that said all through her while growing up she simply thought sex was meant to be forceful you know mm. sex was meant to be oh like you're putting my neck on the wall kind of thing based on what she grew up watching you know and then like a formative years she's seen sex to be oh it must be by force like it must be painful for me to enjoy it right mm. and also going forward i mean and i said and she told me that oh did you know that the song kiriwa was promoting sex i'm like wait hold up how she's like mommy oh mommy mommy oh, they yeah. for journey. somebody that mommy you know so I'm like, she pushed mommy on the bed and then the man called do kiriwa like all those things are yeah. subconscious things that you know they've been able like they became like ingrained in us so we start seeing it to be oh so she must actually if she's not screaming she's not enjoying it guys yeah. some guys are that kind of mentality oh yeah you know some guys are that kind of mentality so i mean they, that's when like, the entire forceful kind of thing you know comes into place and um truthfully speaking we need to um we need i would say it again it's a fundamental issue yeah. either okay. it's the law or the upbringing yeah. you know or whatever it is like this so, for example now if a girl says oh i was raped two years ago she won't want to come out simply because even the Nigerian law doesn't support it. Why? Because yeah, you need to prove. And to prove, rape, to, prove rape, to prove rape is mind-blowing, mm -hmm. right? You need to prove that there was like, you know, like the semen in you or there was penetration or forced entry. How on earth do I show forced entry after a year or two years? Yeah. So like they, they need to make these things easy for the ladies and also for the guys. And I'm saying this, not everybody, get, every, everyone is susceptible to being raped, mm -hmm. not just the girls. Yeah. Okay. Like um, I have friends who said, oh, like their first encounter ever was from like their from like their brother's uncle mm. or from their mom's uncle that came to us and put them to like some mm. disgusting and I mean, and this, this conversation thing. is inexhaustible. We'll, we'll have to do this again. But finally, I mean, let's Definitely. just get um, in 30 seconds, last take from Sega Link um, so we can wrap it up because of time. Thank you very much. Um, they've said a lot of things and I don't want to repeat what they've said. Uh, but we must consider, there's no how we can continue to emote over issues of rape and harmful cultural practices that were deemed to be part of our culture in Nigeria. Um, I want to believe that anyone who has been raped before, who, have been, uh, who is a survivor, don't think that because you don't have evidence, you can come forward. There are other means. Exactly. The one beautiful thing about laws is that you can innovate yourself. You can look at different angles. If somebody raped you and you don't have evidence, but you have confided in other people, we can use character witnesses. 
We can use the deliberate uh, intention to create, to uh, for emotional, to in inflict emotional distress. These are ways in which you can begin to bring serial rapists, you know, in, to book. So there are so many things. We look at, we look at privileges. You know, when you when people think they have privilege, you know, to do certain things, that means they are above the law. That means they can always get away with it. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why they repeat these things. And we cannot continue to uphold or reinforce the culture of rape by uh, carrying out this uh, rape violence, incest, battery, or removal of autonomy, degradation, victimization. When you go, when you go to social media, you see how people justify these things. Where is your evidence? And uh -huh. what were you wearing? People don't recruit. Exactly. They rape human beings. Yeah. <laughs> so these are things that we need to understand. And we need to continue to educate our young because responsible men, I'm a father, you know, so I have daughters. So I, I, can't, I can't imagine all these things happening to my children. So because of that, I take responsibility to, to, to champion that particular uh, course and okay. speak about it without being ashamed and call out Thank people you, who Sarah I Ling. know, you know, to be found wanting this on this conversation. So definitely continues. It's our yeah, the conversation continues and we'll, we'll definitely have to do this again. Thank you, Uche. Thank you, Leko. Thank you, Segaling, for your time. And of course, thank you to my co anchors. Unfortunately, we have to go right now. And um, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. And if you have more questions, please do not hesitate to send them to us and um, we'll try to respond to them as much as possible. Join the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on social media or send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906005719. Um, my name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.